Hello, I'm Goddard. Today you're going to get a unique glimpse on how I do my pop art paintings. Um, the reason I started doing these was uh, because I can't afford my own artwork and uh, a lot of you out there have, I don't know, 20 or 30 of my pieces. Thank you very much. Um, keeps me from having to go back to roofing. But uh, anyway, so what I did was I created these so that uh, those of you that have uh, a bunch of my work um, can uh, have the opportunity to purchase an original. So each one of these pop arts that I do are hand done. Uh, each one is unique, no two are alike because we just kind of uh, do it spontaneously. Um, my assistant uh, is Mr. Coffee here and uh, <laughs> he's, been, uh, he's been my uh, personal assistant now for about the last uh, seven, eight years and uh, so he's very familiar with my painting techniques and a lot of times he'll help me in prepping the canvases and things like that. Um, one of the things that we did earlier was we took, uh, we always start out with a white canvas and uh, we paint it black. There's two ways that we do that. One is by using like a spray and the other is actually just to, uh, to brush stroke it. So it just kind of depends on the, the mood I'm in, I guess. And uh, so anyway, what we're gonna do is um, I do a couple pop arts for you. Um, just gonna kind of wing it and uh, show you how that gets done. And I'll kind of explain as I'm going on how, uh, what I'm doing and, and kind of like my little, uh, my little technique for doing that. So don't tell anybody. <laughs> All right, so the first uh, way that I start out these paintings is I gotta lay out an olive, so I'll start with, uh, with an outline, um, usually like in, uh, in green. So I'll just take the uh, this little deal here. I'll lay one out over here for my, my assistant. And they're not always perfect, but that's kind of the uniqueness of them, so I'm gonna start out that way there. So that's kind of like the, uh, the, shape of the, uh, the shape of the olive. Next thing I do is I use a, a hooker's green and a, uh, a cadmium yellow. So I'm gonna have Mike mix some in a plate. And then I'll use this brush right here. And this will give me a nice, uh, a nice blended, uh, blended sort of look. And uh, what we'll do is we'll highlight the top of it. Usually I'll start out with a little bit of yellow. And, uh, and as I do, you can kind of see it kind of uh, form. I'm also working on what I call wet on wet. And which means that all the paint is wet at the time it's being applied. Very little is uh, already dry by the time I put it on. So, um, but I use the, 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 the yellow first because we want the, um, the colors to really pop out. And um, they, they tend to dull after they dry, but when I first put the paint on, the, um, uh, the, the black tends to kind of show through a little bit. So I'm gonna start out by doing that. I'm gonna take a little bit of this yellow here and uh, throw some of that in here like this some in the middle. I'm trying not to touch the edge at first and uh, throw a little bit of that in there. And a lot of times I'll do this um, with uh, two or three times or whatever. And uh, this is something that Mike helps me with too in prepping these because this is sort of the beginning so I'll lay those, lay those out. So let me go ahead and throw your yellow in there. The other thing after I put the yellow on is, um, as far as the color scheme of the painting, usually I'll work with either warm colors or cool colors, and usually I make that decision as I'm uh, as I'm working it. So um, what I first, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to paint the olive, and then after I painted the olive, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide whether to go with warm colors or cool colors. So, but I like these because these are kind of fun. Uh, they're they're they pop and they're uh, just kind of like spontaneous fun. It makes me feel like a little kid. You know, that's what an artist is, is a kid that forgets to grow up, so, so yeah. All right, so Mike's kind of got his yellow there. And again, we're just gonna let that dry a little bit. That'll give it like a little bit of a uh, little bit of tooth. And I'm gonna do the same thing on here and add a little bit more of the yellow. And uh, now I'm gonna take the green, I'm gonna add the green on. So I'm gonna get a little scoop of green. You can see the yellow. The more I pull on this, that yellow will come back up. That's going to give us a nice, bright spot on there. So I'll just keep pulling it like this. And I kind of try and I try and go with the uh, the flow here. Now when I go back, what I don't want to do is pull the dark green back up. So I'm just going to do it like this, something like this, and that's kind of how how we started out. So now I've got that on there, and the next thing I'll do is I'll uh, do the uh, do the pimento, and uh, usually I'll do the pimento before I go back and kind of re-outline this. So um, let me grab a little bit of red here. So I guess we'll put the pimento on this side here, and I just make little circles or whatever. I don't want to put too much pink, so I want to leave a little bit of room in there. This one's kind of watery, 
Everyone's a little bit different that way. Give me some blue, wait. Yeah, actually, you know what, let's go with the dark blue. Now what I want to do is I want to give this pimento a little bit of a 3D shape. So I'm going to put just a little bit of blue in here like this, right? So I got a little bit of a dark color. And then I'm going to take a brush like this. And I'm just going to kind of mix it over in here, okay? And I'm just going to kind of do it on one side of the pimento. I want it to stay out of the, uh, stay out of the red there. So we end up with something about like this. Okay. So that's the way we uh, kind of get these, these started here. Um, the next thing that I usually do is I'll add the toothpick. And uh, there's a couple you know, colors that I use. Usually I'll use these Liquitex colors here. I've got sort of a brown and a gold and a white here. So this is kind of the color that I would say would be the base of the, the toothpick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with this color here. And then I'm going to take one side of the brush and I'm going to dip it over here on this side. Okay? And what that's going to do is it's going to give me something kind of a nice feel. Now, here's the tricky part. The tricky part is getting this toothpick to come straight through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this edge. And as I do this, I'm going to slowly turn the brush this way. Now what that does, you can kind of see, it gives me a highlight on, on one side. So it makes it, again, it adds a little bit of a three dimension to it. So I'm going to do the same thing down here. What I want to do now is I want to pull, I want to kind of line this thing up. I'm going to start from this edge here, I'm going to pull this thing down, slowly turn it like this. And you can see it's a little bit light, that's okay. Mix up some more color in here, I'll just go right on top. Okay, so we got the light part of the toothpick, okay, which is this color here. I'm going to get a lot of paint on there. I'm going to dip one side in the brown, okay? So here I'm going to take do it just the opposite. So here I'm going to come this way. I'm going to slowly turn the brush, trying to keep it towards the center, okay? And that's our toothpick. Do the same thing on the other side. Making sure that the dark side is on the same area. It'll liven up the, the olive here a little bit. A couple ways to do it. I've got kind of a neutral green here, so what I'm going to do is I want to want to be able to do it darker and lighter. So one of the ways I'm going to do that, I'm going to take a I'm going to take a dark green, this color here, and I'm going to use this on the bottom side. Okay. Okay. It doesn't matter. If it's Let's say we're going to make this a cool color, so I'm just going to dip this like this, give it a little bit of that. Okay. And then uh, we'll go with a, uh, you have some yellow mark? So now we'll do the yellow. Again, this is going to be kind of my highlight. I'm just going to kind of squirt it, whatever, like that. And now it's kind of a basis for uh, this. So I'm going to move over there. I'll have Mike if you want to go ahead and do it. Um, I'm gonna grab some white too, because the white will be the little uh, little highlight. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and just still a little yellow up at the top. So now this is my highlight on the uh, on the on the toothpick. Another thing I'm gonna do on this, just to make this toothpick really pop, right on the edge, and I'm gonna highlight one side with that white, okay, like this. Okay, well, we'll do this one in cool colors, we'll do this one in warm colors. So since this is going to be in warm colors, I'm going to change what I've already got and we're going to outline this one here in uh, yellow. So if you give me some yellow. And this happens a lot, it's kind of the fun of doing the art. I'm going to do this, outline in here. This one here too can I think could use a little bit of yellow, but I'm just going to put a little bit because I'm going to use, a, I'm going to use cool colors over here. It makes that a lot of fun. And I think one other thing I'm going to do here is just make this pimento pop out just a little bit more. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow on the top. Let's use a light blue and a dark blue. I'm going to add a little bit of blue to the background here too. This will help the, the writing stand out. We're going to do the writing in like a black. I mean in the, in the light blue is kind of highlighted here. They stay in art. It's uh, You don't stay inside the lines thinking outside the line. So. I'm going to do that over here as well. I'm going to take and just do a little bit of this red, make it come outside just a little bit. 